One day, a 17-year-old athlete named Yu Han Sol took part in a major professional event where he wanted to lift a barbell weighing 10 tons. Yu Han trained his body hard over the years and became stronger in order to one day become the strongest being on earth and thereby make history. Despite such a huge weight of the barbell, Yu Han was still able to lift it off the ground and lift it. Yu Han's muscles were so tense that his clothes began to tear the moment he lifted the barbell. However, at one point, Yu Han felt ill, and while lifting the barbell, Yu Han let go of the barbell and fell to the ground. Yu Han lay unconscious on the ground, and blood began to flow profusely from his nose. And then the organizers immediately demanded that the doctors return Yu Han to consciousness as soon as possible. However, the medical team failed to save Yu Han's life, and after his death, Yu Han opened his eyes and saw the blue sky in front of him. Then Yu Han thought that nothing would have happened to him now if his muscles were even bigger and stronger. While Yu Han continued to lie on the ground unconscious, he gained new skills such as boundless musculature, battle compression muscles, and hawk vision. A few seconds later, Yu Han's body found itself in the middle of a green field, along which many well-fed chickens were walking. Soon, the chickens began to peck at Yu Han lying on the ground, causing Yu Han to wake up soon after. Having come to his senses, Yu Han noticed that he was in the middle of a huge field, in which there were a lot of huge chickens, and high mountains could be seen in the distance. At this moment, Yu Han thought that he was in a personal hell with a lot of chickens, since in his past life he ate chicken meat very often. While Yu Han was thinking about where he ended up, huge chickens continued to try to peck at Yu Han's face, and he decided that these chickens were trying to attack him. Yu Han began to get very annoyed at how the chickens were trying to peck at him, and then a somewhat irritated Yu Han finished off one of the chickens. Yu Han also thought that in this world he would not be able to access pure protein. The moment Yu Han looked at the chicken again, his hawk vision skill was activated, allowing him to see all the necessary data about living beings. Thanks to his skill, Yu Han learned that these chickens were so plump that their bodies contained more than 60 kilograms of pure protein. Yu Han thought that if these chickens were so nutritious, then he simply had to eat at least one such bird. Then Yu Han immediately attacked one chicken in order to eat it as soon as possible and get rid of hunger. Even though these chickens were so well fed and they ran very fast, Yu Han still managed to catch a couple of chickens and eat them. After a hearty lunch, Yu Han noticed that his arms had become much thinner than before. Yu Han also noticed that his pectoral muscles had also become much smaller. Yu Han walked up to the river, looked at himself in the reflection, and could not believe that all those muscles that he had trained all these years suddenly disappeared in one moment. Yu Han felt so sad that all his muscles had disappeared that for a moment he stopped wondering how he ended up in this world. After that, Yu Han walked to the nearest tree and began to think that he must regain his strong and strong body. After that, Yu Han grabbed the tree as tightly as possible and pulled it out of the ground with its roots. After Yu Han pulled out the tree, he placed it on his shoulders and began to squat to get his muscles back. After several hours of grueling squats, Yu Han decided that training would be enough for today. After training, Yu Han felt that his muscles had not grown at all. Then, Yu Han looked at the chickens running around the field and decided that he had enough protein for his muscles to become larger over time. Just as Yu Han was about to continue his training, a giant rooster appeared behind him. The rooster turned out to be many times larger than those chickens that were running around the field. And this rooster was even larger than many trees in the area. Yu Han decided that now he was unlikely to be able to defeat such a serious opponent. And then Yu Han decided to try to escape from the giant rooster. While Yu Han was trying to run away from the giant rooster, the rooster tried to stop Yu Han with a strong kick to the ground, but Yu Han continued to run away. Yu Han didn't know how he could resist the giant rooster since it was much stronger than him at the moment. While Yu Han was running away from the giant rooster, he also looked at the rooster and thought about how big his pectoral muscles were, and it would be nice if Yu Han had the same muscles. At this moment, Yu Han was thinking that his muscles were not growing because he only did strength exercises, from which his muscles did not grow at all. While Yu Han was trying to escape from the giant rooster, several chickens appeared on his way and blocked Yu Han's path. At the same moment, Yu Han's hawk vision was activated again, which could not help Yu Han in any way at the moment. Yu Han tried to run as quickly as possible, but the giant rooster was faster, and with every second he was getting even closer to Yu Han. While Yu Han was trying to escape, the hawk's eye showed Yu Han that this giant rooster was made of pure protein, and there was more than 12 tons of protein in this rooster. Yu Han also learned that if he ate the breast of this rooster, he would get faster muscle recovery. Then, Yu Han thought that in order for him to regain his muscles, the ability to quickly restore his muscles would be very useful, and he decided to try to defeat the rooster. 
In order to quickly defeat the giant rooster, Yu Han decided to climb higher so that the rooster could not crush him. At that moment, Yu Han realized that his muscles would not grow during training, but only after them, when the muscles needed rest and time to heal themselves. During exercise, a person's muscles are severely damaged, and after exercising, the person will experience severe muscle pain as the muscles try to recover. After such restoration, the muscles grow together, as a result of which they become larger and stronger. At this moment, the rooster's neck became many times longer, and Yu Han jumped away from the tree towards the rooster so that he could not attack him. After Yu Han dodged the rooster's attack, he decided that he should attack the rooster as soon as possible. During the attack, a warning appeared in front of Yu Han that during the attack, his combat muscle contraction ability would stop working. Suddenly, the ability of combat muscle compression simply stopped working, and at the same moment, the muscles on Yu Han's arm immediately became many times larger. Then Yu Han decided that with such a pumped up arm, he could defeat the giant rooster with just one blow. When Yu Han finally made his attack, the giant rooster was immediately defeated. At this moment, Yu Han was only thinking that tonight he would be dining on the breast of a giant protein rooster. Towards evening, Yu Han butchered the carcass of a giant rooster, after which he began greedily eating the huge rooster's breast. At this moment, several ghouls were hiding in the bushes not far from Yu Han and were watching him. These ghouls were so hungry that they couldn't stop watching Yu Han eat the giant rooster's breast with great appetite. These ghouls had not eaten anything for a very long time, which is why their bones could be seen right through their skin. No one had been able to defeat a giant rooster so easily before, and the ghouls decided that Yu Han had the strength of a monster. Then one of the ghouls suggested approaching Yu Han and asking him for some food, but his comrades thought that this was a bad idea. Eventually, the ghouls decided to come out in front of Yu Han and he asked the group of ghouls who they were and what they wanted from him. Then one of the ghouls said that they lived in this territory, which they called Ali's Mine. At this moment, the hawk's eye showed Yu Han that these ghouls contained about 600 grams of protein, but Yu Han believed that he would never eat ghouls. Then Yu Han simply looked at the ghouls and thought that this was the first time he had heard about these creatures. One of the ghouls told Yu Han that they were looking for someone who could defeat the giant rooster. Then Yu Han told the ghouls that it was he who killed this rooster, and he decided that this rooster was the food of the ghouls. The ghouls began to greatly rejoice that they were able to find the one who killed the giant rooster. Also, one of the ghouls told Yu Han that since he killed the strongest monster of these lands, now different species began to fight for these territories. Yu Han didn't listen to what this ghoul was telling him, and he just looked at how thin his legs were. Meanwhile, the ghoul continued to talk about how, Despite the fact that this giant rooster was not the smartest creature, he still knew the entire local territory well. After this, the ghouls said that they now need the help of someone who could defeat this giant rooster. Yu Han finished listening to the ghouls and asked them to repeat what they had just told him again, since he did not hear what they told him. One of the ghouls told Yu Han that they had already repeated to him zero times everything they had said before. Then Yu Han just laughed lightly and told the ghouls that they should always repeat everything ten times. Suddenly, Yu Han's manner of communication became more rude and intimidating, and he once again told the ghouls that they must repeat everything they do ten times. After these words, the ghouls believed that Yu Han would not help them, and then they decided that it was time for them to go back. Then Yu Han, in a softer form, told the ghouls that in the near future, he would be busy pumping up his muscles, and that he would hardly have time left to help. And then the ghouls said that they would not waste his time. As the ghouls were about to leave, one of them told Yu Han that they were not upset at all, since they understood that everyone had their own circumstances. Then Yu Han invited the ghouls to take with them at least part of the meat that was left after the giant rooster. Then the ghouls stopped and decided that they really should take some food with them, since they had not eaten anything for a very long time. After that, Yu Han gave the ghouls the largest piece of meat and apologized to them for the fact that he could no longer help them in any way. Yu Han gave the ghouls such a large piece of meat that the three of them would have enough meat for several weeks. Then the ghouls decided to try to take this piece of meat, but it turned out to be too big and heavy for them, and they did not know how they could drag it. Yu Han watched as one of the ghouls tried to lift this piece of meat, and he believed that they needed help, since they could seriously injure their backs. After that, Yu Han walked up to this ghoul and started yelling at him for trying to lift this piece of meat incorrectly. With each passing second, Yu Han screamed at the ghoul louder, and he told him that if he continued to try to lift this piece of meat in this position, he might break his back. This ghoul was afraid that Yu Han was yelling at him so much, and then he apologized to Yu Han for his ignorance. Then Yu Han calmed down slightly 
and thought that these ghouls did not know how to lift weights at all. Then the ghouls said that this was the first time they had ever heard that weights needed to be lifted somehow correctly. At this moment, Yu Han felt somewhat ashamed and told them that this was why they were so skinny and weak. Then the ghouls decided that they should try to lift this piece of meat with the three of them. But Yu Han believed that this would not help them much. Then Yu Han remembered the moment from elementary school when his coach told him that you can truly learn something only when you teach someone yourself. The coach also told Yu Han that if one day he stops achieving something in sports, then he can try to teach someone what he himself learned. Meanwhile, the ghouls had already managed to barely lift a huge piece of meat and try to drag it. After a couple of seconds, one of the ghouls felt someone behind him helping him drag this piece of meat. Later, Yu Han took this piece of meat in his hands and invited the ghouls to have a little refreshment and then head together to their settlement. Yu Han was also afraid that his muscles might disappear again, and he invited the ghouls to spend the night in his camp and go to the ghoul settlement tomorrow morning, and the ghouls were not against such an offer. The next day, Yu Han went to the ghoul settlement with the ghouls. The first thing Yu Han found himself in was the house of the lord of all the ghouls who lived in this area. When Yu Han arrived at the ghoul lord's house, he showed his hospitality and asked Yu Han if he had any difficulties on the way here. Yu Han kept looking at the ghoul lord and said that he got here without any difficulty. Yu Han looked at the ghoul lord and thought that he looked very much like a large toad, since he also had long legs and a large belly. At this moment, the ghoul lord thanked Yu Han for providing him and his people with such a valuable gift as a piece of giant rooster meat suitable for consumption. The ghoul lord also told Yu Han that his subjects would bring him the remaining meat, but Yu Han said that they had a lot of time for this. Then the ghoul lord only laughed loudly and could not believe that Yu Han was actually worried about the condition of his subjects. Yu Han felt that there was something wrong with this ghoul lord, and he asked him to get straight to the point. The ghoul lord then told Yu Han that because he had defeated the giant rooster, he and his people were in some trouble. The ghoul lord also told Yu Han that the ghoul people are the weakest people in the alley mines, since besides him, none of the ghouls have any skills anymore. Yu Han then interrupted the ghoul lord and asked him what skills he was talking about, since Yu Han had heard something about these skills in his head before. The ghoul lord couldn't believe that Yu Han really didn't know what skills he was talking about, and he thought that he was just joking. At this moment, the face of the ghoul lord became more evil and insidious, and then he ordered those ghouls that Yu Han came with to be brought to him. A second later, a couple of ghouls brought the same ghouls Yu Han had brought to the lord, and the lord ordered them to kneel before him. The ghouls knelt down and asked their lord why he had called them. The ghoul lord only told his subordinates that sometimes the criminal may not realize his mistake, after which he ordered his weapon to be brought to him. A couple of minutes later, several ghouls brought their lord his largest club. The ghoul lord took up his club and told the ghouls that the basis of their discipline was unquestioning loyalty to those who were stronger than them. The ghoul lord also told his subordinates that he wanted these ghouls to find the one who defeated this giant rooster, bring him to the settlement, and persuade him to submit to his will. However, the ghoul lord felt that his subjects had betrayed him, and so he wanted them to pay for their deception with their lives as soon as possible. The ghoul lord then used a special skill that makes his weapon heavier and prepared to finish off his subjects. The ghoul lord's subordinates believed that at that moment, a severe punishment would overtake them, but something stopped the ghoul lord from delivering his crushing blow. Later, the ghoul saw that Yu Han stopped the ghoul lord, and he believed that this lord became the leader in this settlement only because he had enough strength to offend the weak. The ghoul lord was somewhat amazed that Yu Han managed to stop his strike so easily. At one point, the ghoul lord believed that he simply did not activate his skill, since it seemed to him that at the moment of impact, his club became lighter again. Then the ghoul lord told Yu Han that since he managed to survive his blow, he would like to show his skill once again. The ghoul lord prepared to strike again and told Yu Han that his waiting skill allowed him to increase the weight of objects in his hands from two to ten times. After this, the ghoul lord told Yu Khan that he now has enough mana to increase the weight of his club by four times. The ghoul lord also said that initially the weight of this club is 32 kilograms, and as its weight increases, the impact force will be simply incredibly enormous. After this, the ghoul lord used his waiting skill and prepared to flatten Yu Han with his club. However, Yu Han was not at all afraid of such an attack, and he simply put his hand under the blow, causing the ghoul lord's club to simply collapse. After the attack of the ghoul lord, Yu Han quickly approached the lord and told him that he had a really useful and strong skill, and that he would not want to be at enmity with him. But he was somewhat surprised by the lord's character. At that very second, Yu Han grabbed the ghoul lord by his neck and believed that the ghoul lord considered himself strong enough to control the lives of others. A second later, Yu Han squeezed the ghoul lord's neck even more tightly 
and asked him how many kilograms the Lord could handle in squats, bench presses, and deadlifts. The ghoul lord did not fully understand what Yu Han was telling him, and he thought that Yu Han wanted to fight him. Yu Han then explained that he was talking about exercises, and that if someone asks him how much weight he can do in these exercises, it means what is the maximum weight he can lift in these exercises. After that, Yu Han looked at the other ghouls and realized that no one among them had heard of these exercises before. Then Yu Han decided that now a competition should be held in which he and the ghoul lord would find out which of them was stronger. After a while, Yu Han went outside with the ghoul lord, and Yu Han explained to the lord that they both just needed to lift the barbell to find out who was stronger. Before the ghoul lord performed the deadlift, he reminded Yu Han that if he won, he would serve him for the rest of his life. In response, Yu Han only told the ghoul lord that during the exercise he should tense his muscles as much as possible so as not to tear his back later. At this moment, the ghoul lord was absolutely confident of his victory, since his weighting skill could not only make objects heavier, but also significantly reduce their weight and make them lighter. After this, the ghoul lord applied his skill and reduced the weight of the barbell from 200 to 50 kilograms, and he was able to lift the heavy barbell with ease. It was Yu Han's turn to do the deadlift, and he told the ghoul lord that next time he should tighten his glutes more. Yu Han also looked at the other ghouls and told them that if he wins, he will force them to do this exercise too. Before starting to perform the deadlift, Yu Han decided to stretch his body a little, since when performing a deadlift, almost all muscle groups are involved. During the warm-up, Yu Han thought that serious injuries could occur while performing deadlifts, and therefore it was important to relax the hip joints and ensure that the technique was performed correctly. Before performing a deadlift, Yu Han should place their feet shoulder-width apart and straighten up. After this, Yu Han must straighten his chest, tense his back and lower back and grab the barbell. Next, Yu Han should try to lift the barbell, giving impulse from the steps throughout the body. While Yu Han was trying to perform the exercise, the ghoul lord used his skill to make the barbell in Yu Han's hands become significantly heavier. However, despite the fact that the barbell became significantly heavier, Yu Han did not stop trying to lift it. As a result, Yu Han strained his muscles so much that he simply did not calculate his strength. And at that same second, a barbell weighing 800 kilograms flew high into the sky. The ghoul lord and his subjects were shocked that Yu Han actually accidentally managed to send such a heavy barbell flying. Then Yu Han only apologized to the ghoul lord and told him that in this case, it was necessary to make a new barbell. After a couple of seconds, the bar landed on the ground, and the ghoul lord and his subjects bowed their knees before Yu Han and accepted him as the new ghoul lord. From this moment on, Yu Han becomes the new holder of the title of ghoul lord and now the old ghoul lord will unquestioningly carry out all his instructions. From a short dialogue with the old ghoul lord, Yu Han realized that this world was very different from his previous world. Yu Han also learned that he could somehow return to his world, but Yu Han was afraid that if he returned to his world in this state, he would be considered a weakling, and he decided to postpone his return. Yu Han learned that this place is called Laisha, and that in this place everything works according to the law of the jungle, that is, the strongest creatures rule in this world over weaker creatures. To avoid further confusion, Yu Han decided to address the previous ghoul lord as the old ghoul lord, since the old ghoul lord had forgotten his previous name. After a short conversation, the old ghoul lord led Yu Han to the place where ghouls usually train. Soon, Yu Han and the old ghoul lord arrived at a large empty field where there were no simulators or other items for training ghouls. Even though Yu Han had expected to see something like this based on the physical training of the ghouls, even so, he was somewhat amazed by what he saw. Then, Yu Han wondered what kind of training the ghouls were doing here. But the old ghoul lord said that he himself did not know how his subordinates could even somehow train here. Then, Yu Han believed that a first-class trainer himself could create simulators for training, after which he ordered all the ghouls to be gathered into formation. When Yu Han gathered all the ghouls, he told them that he knew that in these lands, ghouls are considered the weakest creatures and that they are forced to eat what is left after other creatures. Yu Han then told the ghouls that in order to fix this, they need to pump up their muscles and become stronger. Yu Han also told the ghouls that from now on he will train them for three months, and during this time the ghouls will be able to become much stronger. The ghouls could not believe what Yu Han said, as they could not believe that he could make them stronger in such a short time. Many ghouls were encouraged by Yu Han's words, as they were confident that if they did so, the other creatures would stop treating them like weaklings. Yu Han saw that all the ghouls were ready to train, and he ordered all the ghouls to take a prone position, but no one reacted at all, since they did not know what it was. Then Yu Han assumed a prone position 
and told the ghouls to start doing push-ups right now. Then the ghouls began to try to get into a prone position, but none of the ghouls were able to get into a prone position correctly. This left Yu Han somewhat disappointed, and he then realized that he would have to do a lot of work to make these ghouls even a little stronger. Yu Han then told the ghouls to do 100 push-ups, and the ghouls started trying to do push-ups. After three hours of training, not a single ghoul was able to complete 100 push-ups, and many of them began to fall to the ground from lack of strength. While the ghouls were trying to repeat at least 100 push-ups, Yu Han had already managed to perform more than 20,000 push-ups with a heavy stone on his back without a break. At one point, the old ghoul lord told Yu Han that among all the ghouls, there was not a single one left who could hold out. Then Yu Han said that in that case, they all need to do another 100 push-ups, after which all the ghouls can go to lunch with him. All the ghouls were shocked that Yu Han was forcing them to do 10 more push-ups when they were supposed to do 700 push-ups before. Then many of them began to complain that if they continued to do push-ups, they would simply die. With every passing second, the number of ghouls who began to complain about the training became more and more, which somewhat disappointed Yu Han himself. At one point, Yu Han finally stopped doing push-ups and ordered all the ghouls to get back on their feet. The ghouls then stood up and began to think that Yu Han had finally decided to let them rest for a while. However, Yu Han only started yelling at the ghouls, and he told them that it was because they had no attitude that they were the weakest creatures. Then Yu Han believed that these ghouls were ready to continue to endure all these humiliations and oppression from other, stronger creatures. Also, Yu Han himself reminded the ghouls that in this world everything operates according to the law of the jungle, and he said that with this approach, they will all soon die. Yu Han also told the ghouls that if they continue to feel sorry for themselves, then sooner or later their family and friends may be in danger. After that, Yu Han pointed to the side and told the ghouls that if there are those among them who want to continue to endure all these humiliations, then they can stop training and go home. After this, Yu Han told the ghouls that if they trusted him, they could become the most powerful creatures. At this moment, Yu Han was thinking about what it really meant to be the best coach. Yu Han used to believe that the best trainer has extensive knowledge of muscle structure, since this person knows exactly how to apply this knowledge in practice. However, at that moment, Yu Han realized that the best trainer must be able to give his student, without motivation, the will to continue training so that in the future, he will only become stronger. Yu Han then told the ghouls that they must believe in themselves so that they can continue to become better people. Yu Han did not stop telling the ghouls that they were doing all this for the sake of their family and friends, for the sake of their people, and for the sake of their new essence. At this point, almost all the ghouls immediately gained strong motivation to continue training despite the severe pain in their muscles. Yu Han continued to motivate the ghouls and instill in them faith in their abilities. Eventually, the ghouls stopped complaining of being very tired during training, and then they began to make every effort to become stronger. However, Yu Han also became better at this moment, as his coaching skills also became exponentially better. After three months, a group of humanoid lizards headed towards the place where the ghouls lived. During their hike, one of the lizards decided to make sure that they were going in the right direction, and one of his comrades told him that they had almost reached the ghoul settlement. Soon the lizards reached the ghoul village, and then one of the lizards suggested using their fighting abilities. However, another lizard believed that the ghouls were weak enough to defeat them without the use of combat skills. Then the lizards decided that they could easily capture this ghoul village and turn it into their colony. Soon, Yu Han and the old ghoul lord noticed that an army of lizards was approaching towards their village. Then Yu Han ordered the ghouls to leave all their affairs for later, and prepare to defend the village. Soon the ghouls began to watch the advance of the lizards in order to choose the right moment for defense. When the lizards got close enough, the ghouls began to roll many large and heavy stone boulders onto the lizards. After such an attack, many lizards could not continue the fight, and then they only wanted to find out who dared to attack them. Yu Han then looked at the lizards and told them that they were attacked by ghouls. Yu Han also told the lizards that ghouls are now considered far from the weakest creatures. At this moment, one of the lizards considered that if he did not do anything right now, he could suffer great losses among the warriors. Then this lizard looked at the old ghoul lord and believed that if he could capture him, he could change the outcome of the invasion. Later, the lizard felt how strong the mana was coming from the old ghoul lord, and he believed that he could easily defeat the old ghoul lord. Then the lizard demanded that the ghoul lord come down to him as soon as possible. Yu Han and the old ghoul lord watched as this lizard tried to provoke the ghoul lord into coming down to him. The old ghoul lord looked at Yu Han and asked him how he would react to this enemy provocation. At this moment, Yu Han remembered that he had a saltwater crocodile as a pet as a child, and this crocodile would often drool when he wanted to be played with. 
This crocodile was very dangerous, since its bite force was estimated at about two tons, and even an adult could not resist this animal in any way in case of danger. However, despite such great strength and its natural aggression, this crocodile still could not harm Yu Han with his pumped up muscles. At this moment, Yu Han felt that in order to stop this lizard, he should try to calm it down just like he did with his pet crocodile. Then Yu Han immediately jumped off the cliff from which he had been watching the advance of the lizards. The lizard thought that since Yu Han was coming down to him instead of the previous ghoul lord, he was admitting defeat, since he did not know that the old ghoul lord was no longer the leader of the ghoul village. After Yu Han landed on the ground, he immediately grabbed the lizard by the armpits and threw him onto his back on the ground. After this, Yu Han immediately began to look intently into the lizard's eyes to show him that he was not afraid of him and that he was stronger than him. The lizard was very scared when Yu Han started looking into his eyes so intently and he demanded that Yu Han let him go right now. However, instead of letting the lizard go, Yu Han began to continuously repeat to the lizard that he was stronger than him so that the lizard would experience even more fear. With every second, the lizard became more and more afraid, and he asked Yu Han to stop disgracing him in front of his warriors. However, Yu Han continued to irritate the lizard, and he continued to tell the lizard that he was stronger than him. As a result, the frightened lizard could no longer tolerate such serious psychological pressure, and he told Yu Han that he was admitting defeat. Yu Han immediately released the lizard, and he was glad that this time his technique of calming his pet crocodile worked on the huge humanoid lizard. Meanwhile, the ghouls began to greatly rejoice that for the first time in all this time, they had finally managed to defeat such a serious opponent. Meanwhile, in the neighboring county of Weirdo, the Count was knighting new warriors from his county. At this moment, Count Huerdo ordered his new knights to find out the circumstances of the disappearance of a giant rooster that lived in the territory of the Alley Mines. The new knights swore allegiance to Count Huerdo, after which they immediately set off to complete their first task. After the new knights left the chambers of Count Weirdo, the Count decided to ask the captain of the knightly guard why she decided to entrust such an important task to some youngsters. Then the captain of the knightly guard told Count Huerdo that despite the fact that these knights were still so young, they were still considered true professionals. The first knight was named Raper, and he was the best in the county with a light sword, and even the captain of the knightly guard himself could envy his skills. The second knight's name was Hendered, and he was skilled with a large two-handed sword, and despite the fact that his sword was never sharpened, Hendred could still cut through his enemies with ease. The captain of the knightly guard believed that with the joint efforts of Raper and Hendred, they could defeat even a dragon. Then Count Huerdo decided to find out from the captain of the knightly guard what was unique about the third knight, who was with Raper and Hendred. At this moment, the captain of the knightly guard was somewhat confused, since the third knight did not have any special combat skills. Then Count Huerdo did not understand why the captain of the knightly guard sent this knight on a mission. Then the captain of the knightly guard said that this knight had been friends with Raper and Hendred since childhood, and that they were very attached to each other. Meanwhile, Rainper, Hendred, and the third knight named Blog were already in the vicinity of Ali. At this moment, one of the goblins was watching the knights, and this goblin was already preparing to attack them. A second later, the goblin took out an arrow and prepared to shoot one of the knights with his bow. Before the goblin had time to release the arrow and shoot, Raper was already behind this goblin. The moment the goblin released the arrow, Raper managed to draw his sword and behead the hostile goblin. As the arrow flew past Blog, several more goblins appeared from the bushes and sat in ambush. Then Hender took out his sword and began to cut down the goblins attacking him and Blog one by one. Raper told Hender that their first priority for now was to protect the Blog. At this moment, Blog also took out his sword and shield, despite the fact that they could not withstand the attacking goblins. After a short battle, Raper and Hender managed to defeat all the goblins that attacked them. And after the battle, they decided to check on the condition of the Blog. Raper was very angry at Handard for accidentally missing one of the goblins' attack towards Blog, and Handard just stood there and listened to Raper's screams. While Raper continued to yell at Handard, Blog was ashamed of himself for not being able to fight on par with Raper and Handard. Meanwhile, Han Yu, along with the ghouls and the lizards who attacked them, performed assisted push-ups. Very soon, the lizards began to complain that they were very tired of doing the exercises, but Han Yu and the ghouls did not even think about stopping doing the exercises. After a long training, Yu Han finally released the lizards and allowed them to return unharmed. The ghouls thought it would be nice if the lizards trained with them more often, but the lizards did not plan to return to the ghouls anytime soon. Soon the ghouls finally said goodbye to the lizards, but at that moment, the lizards only thought that they should leave this village as soon as possible. At this moment, Yu Han looked at the ghouls and thought that he too was very surprised when he first saw the ghouls so pumped up. 
One day in the ninth week of training, the ghouls' progress dropped dramatically as they now struggled to do 3,400 push-ups, whereas the day before, they could easily do 3,500 push-ups. Yu Han believed that it was necessary to give the ghouls a fasting day so that their muscles could rest and recover. If a person experiences fatigue in the central nervous system, then the effectiveness of his training decreases greatly, and then the chances of unexpected injuries increase. In order to reduce the risk of injury and increase the effectiveness of training, there is unloading, during which the body restores its strength, from which the muscles also begin to recover. However, Yu Han was very surprised when he saw that after a short rest, the ghoul's muscles became larger the very next day after their last training. Yu Han was amazed at how quickly the ghouls became taller and stronger, and it even scared Yu Han a little. Using his hawk vision, Yu Han saw the progress of how much the ghoul's muscle mass had increased and how much their fat mass had decreased. Yu Han looked at all this data and thought that now the ghouls will no longer need unloading. After the lizards finally left the ghoul village, Yu Han offered the ghouls a little refreshment. Then one of the ghouls asked Yu Han if they could try hunting themselves this time. Yu Han was somewhat wary of the ghouls being so independent, and he believed that they just wanted to skip the training and run away. However, one of the ghouls told Yu Han that they had never hunted big chickens on their own before, but only carried the bodies of those chickens that Yu Han caught. Then this ghoul thought that since they had become so strong, they could catch the chickens themselves. After this explanation, Yu Han felt that the ghouls should actually try hunting on their own, and that in that case, it would also be worth increasing their training time. At this moment, the old ghoul lord was thinking about whether the ghouls could defeat Yu Han. A second later, the old ghoul lord realized that he had just spoken his thoughts out loud, and that Yu Han had heard everything he had just said. Then, the old ghoul lord told Yu Han that he had simply misspoken, and he was only thinking about whether the ghouls, by combining their efforts, could be stronger than Yu Han. Yu Han then put his hand on the old ghoul lord's shoulder and calmed him down, and he explained to the old ghoul lord that a trained athlete like him would never lose to newcomers like the ghouls. After that, Yu Han and several ghouls went hunting for huge chickens. On the way to the hunting place, the ghouls traveled not with ordinary steps, but with lunges of their legs forward, and it was very difficult for them to continue walking like this. Yu Han watched the ghouls coming and he told them that this was part of their training. Suddenly, at one moment, one of the ghouls incorrectly put his leg forward, from which he received a severe muscle injury. Due to severe pain, the ghoul fell to the ground and grabbed his injured leg, and this ghoul could not continue on his way in this condition. Yu Han looked at this ghoul and thought that if at least one of the ghouls had the same strong joints as his, then this could motivate the rest of the ghouls. However, Yu Han and the ghouls had walked too far to return back to the camp, and then he simply ordered the ghoul with the injured leg to get up and continue to follow with the rest of the ghouls. That same night, Blog went outside and began to train hard while Raper and Hendred went to bed. The Blog believed that if he were strong enough to fight his enemies on his own, then Raper and Henhard would stop fighting over him. Then the Blog decided to train during rest in order to sooner or later become stronger. Suddenly, at one moment, Raper appeared behind the Blog, who was trying to help the Blog during training. At this moment, Blog felt very ashamed, since he believed that Raper woke up precisely because of him. However, Raper told Blog that he actually knew that Blog was training at night in secret from Raper and Handard. A second later, Raper grabbed Blog's cheek and told him that he would really like to help him speed up his progress in training. After that, Raper let go of Blog and started laughing, which made Blog think he was doing something wrong. Suddenly, at the same moment, Handard appeared, who wanted to know what Blog and Raper were doing at such a time and why they were both awake. The Blog wanted to tell Handard that he was just training and that Raper wanted to help him out a little. However, Raper didn't let Blog finish, and he started asking Handard how he dared show up here after he almost put Blog in danger. Hendard only told Raper that it was time for them all to go to bed, since if they didn't get enough sleep tomorrow, they would be more tired tomorrow. Then Raper told Blog that they would now finish training and go to bed, but Blog only asked Raper and Handard why they were constantly arguing about him. Raper told Blog that they were friends and that they were very worried about him, but Blog still didn't understand why the friends were arguing over another friend. Then, at one point, the Blog decided that there was no point in trying to find an answer to this question, since Raper and Hendard were only laughing it off, and he decided that it was really time for them all to go to bed. At that moment, lizards who had previously tried to attack the ghoul village burst into the knight's camp, and the knights prepared to hold the defense. Raper and Hendard took out their swords and prepared to fight to once again protect Blog. In fact, the lizards did not intend to attack the knights, and in fact they were simply trying to escape from someone. 
At that moment, a large crowd of huge chickens ran towards the fleeing lizards. In turn, the chickens tried to escape as quickly as possible from Yu Han and the crowd of pumped-up ghouls, who took a long time to get to their habitat. A few hours earlier, Yu Han and his crowd of ghouls had finally reached the chickens' habitat. Yu Han had some doubts that the ghouls would be able to defeat the chickens, since it seemed to him that the muscles of the chickens were much larger and stronger. However, the ghouls felt that the muscles of the chickens were just very inflated, and that they had no practical strength, and such self-confidence of the ghouls made Yu Han somewhat angry. Suddenly, the ghouls saw how one of the chickens, chasing a worm, got stuck between the trees. Instead of trying to get out, this chicken immediately tensed all her muscles to the limit. After a couple of seconds, the chicken tensed her muscles so much that the trees between which she was stuck immediately broke, and then the chicken managed to catch and eat her worm. Yu Han and the ghouls saw how this chicken destroyed two trees at once, and they thought that they could not defeat these chickens. Then, one of the ghouls got up and went to the two nearest trees to try to break them the same way the chicken did. The ghoul did a little warm-up and began trying to break the trees. However, despite all his efforts and the strength of his muscles, this ghoul did not manage to break the trees. After a few seconds, the ghoul was exhausted, and he said that he should rest first, and then he would definitely be able to break these trees. After this ghoul caught his breath, Yu Han advised him to move one leg back a little to create a little support. This ghoul did everything as Yu Han told him, and he was ready to try to demolish these trees again. Yu Han and the rest of the ghouls stood aside and watched how this ghoul would manage to demolish the trees. After a couple of seconds, the ghoul began to try to tear down the trees again, and this time he tried to tense his muscles even more. However, despite all his efforts, the ghoul was unable to break down these trees, and then Yu Han decided that this ghoul should stop trying to tear down the trees for now. Yu Han looked at this ghoul and tried to understand why this ghoul failed to demolish these trees, since Yu Han believed that the bench press was supposed to greatly improve the efficiency of all the joints in the ghoul's body. While Yu Han was trying to understand what the ghouls were doing wrong, he noticed how the chickens began to line up. After the chickens lined up, they grabbed each other with their wings and began to pull each other in different directions. At this moment, Yu Han realized what his mistake as a trainer was, and Yu Han could not notice this mistake earlier due to the constant progress of the ghouls. Then Yu Han told the ghouls that it was his fault that the ghouls could not repeat what these chickens could easily do. The ghouls believed that they were doing something wrong, however. Yu Han explained to the ghouls that they were simply accustomed to his training. The ghouls couldn't accept the fact that they were actually used to Yu Han's training, and Yu Han said that he should at least diversify their training somehow. After that, Yu Han left for a while, and within a few minutes he returned to the ghouls and ordered them to line up. At that moment, Yu Han showed the ghouls a new simulator, called a crossover, by tying elastic bands to two nearby trees. After Yu Han introduced the crossover to the ghouls, he told them that if the ghouls can pump up their muscles on this simulator, then they can easily repeat the same thing that these chickens can do. The ghouls were happy that Yu Han was trying to diversify their training, and they couldn't wait to start crossover training. Before the ghouls began crossover training, Yu Han wanted to show them how to properly perform crossover exercises. First of all, Yu Han explained to the ghouls that crossover exercises are designed to pump up the internal chest muscles. Before starting to perform exercises on the crossover, Yu Han showed the ghouls the pose required for training, during which they need to bend their knees and tilt their upper torso. In addition to body position, you need to place your arms in such a position that during the exercise, their position always remains the same. During the crossover exercise, you need to stretch your chest forward and begin to move your arms towards the center, as if a bird is trying to flap its wings for a successful takeoff. You can also slightly change the angle of your lower back and the position of the ropes in your hands so that other chest muscles are pumped during the exercise. After Yu Han explained the crossover training method to the ghouls, he showed them several more trees where they could also train their pectoral muscles. At this moment, the ghouls immediately rushed to the new simulators in order to pump up their muscles as quickly as possible. Yu Han looked with emotion at the ghouls rushing towards the new crossovers and thought that there was nothing sweeter in the world than novice athletes. After some time, all the ghouls managed to complete several sets of crossover exercises, and soon they began to feel a surge of strength in their chests. After training, the ghouls decided to try hunting chickens, hoping that they now had every chance of a successful hunt. However, when the chickens saw the pumped-up ghouls, they suddenly began to glow brightly and scream loudly. Yu Han and the ghouls did not understand what exactly was happening to the chickens, and they decided not to attack the chickens for now. After a few seconds, the chickens stopped glowing, and after that, their plumage changed somewhat. It seemed to Yu Han that the pectoral muscles of the chickens suddenly became even stronger. 
and the ghouls immediately began to attack the chickens. The ghouls were absolutely confident in their abilities, and they ran towards the chained chickens as quickly as possible. However, instead of starting to run away, the chickens also ran towards the angry ghouls. At this moment, Yu Han decided to use the vision of a hawk and understand how much the chicken's performance had changed. The hawk's vision showed Yu Han that after this strange glow, the chicken's muscle mass and protein content in their bodies increased greatly. Because of this mysterious glow, the chickens could easily deal with the ghouls. Yu Han also learned that the chest of chickens was filled with greatness, which is why an evolutionary process occurred, after which they became even stronger and more dangerous. In order to stop the further evolution of chickens, Yu Han had to concentrate all his strength in his pectoral muscles. While the rest of the ghouls hunted chickens with Yu Han, the old ghoul lord remained in the village to guard it from intruders. However, due to the fact that the ghouls had become much stronger recently, no one was planning to attack the village, and the old ghoul lord could do nothing. Despite this, the old ghoul lord found it somewhat boring to be alone in the entire village, and over time, the old lord became very hungry. Then the old ghoul lord decided that since he couldn't go chicken hunting with the rest of the ghouls, he should try to cook something tasty. After a few minutes, the old ghoul lord decided to prepare a very tasty and nutritious dish, for the preparation of which he would need chicken skin, chicken meat, spices, salt, and vegetable oil. The first thing the old ghoul lord was going to do was wash the chicken skin with the chicken meat and cut it into several long pieces. After the old ghoul lord cut the chicken skin and meat into pieces, he began to soak the pieces with salt and spices so that all the pieces were well seasoned and had a pleasant aroma. After the pieces were soaked in salt and spices, the old ghoul lord mixed breading flour with ground pepper. When the breading mixture was ready, the old ghoul lord began to sprinkle the mixture onto the chopped pieces of chicken skin and meat. After that, the old ghoul lord began to place the pieces in a frying pan with hot oil and fry them until the pieces began to become crispy golden brown. After a few minutes, the old ghoul lord had a lot of chicken pieces in a crispy and very tasty breading, and this dish can also be eaten with ketchup, mayonnaise, mustard, and other sauces. Meanwhile, the ghouls continue to catch at least a few chickens. However, due to the large difference in strength, the ghouls could not do anything to catch the chickens. The ghouls could not understand what they were doing wrong, because it seemed to them that they were doing everything that Yu Han told them to become stronger. The ghouls were desperate, and they began to think about what they were doing wrong, from poor posture to lack of muscle mass. However, Yu Han told the ghouls that the problem was that chickens had been training their bodies their whole lives, while ghouls had only started developing their muscles relatively recently. Then the ghouls realized that they were unlikely to be able to somehow surpass these chickens in muscle mass and strength. However, even though the ghouls did not train their muscles for as long as these huge chickens, Yu Han believed that they still had a way to defeat these chickens and return to the village with good prey. The ghouls found it hard to believe that they could do anything against these chickens, and Yu Han decided to remind them how they reached the point where they now have such large and strong muscles. Yu Han reminded the ghouls that through their joint efforts, they had achieved such a good result, and in the process, they themselves had already entered into a certain rhythm. Yu Han noticed that even despite the heavy workload, the ghouls did not show any signs of fatigue and continued to strive for their goal. Yu Han believed that thanks to such determination and joint training, they became what they are now. However, Yu Han also believed that even though ghouls had become a little stronger, they were still not the strongest creatures. Yu Han told the ghouls that in the world he previously lived in, his base squat weight was 500 kilograms, which greatly surprised the ghouls. Yu Han also told the ghouls that during training, one is constantly faced with overcoming difficulties, and that one must continue to try to overcome these difficulties and thereby become better. Yu Han's words greatly motivated the ghouls to continue trying to defeat the huge chickens. At that moment, when the ghouls were preparing to attack the huge chickens again, Yu Han considered that in addition to the pectoral muscles, the ghouls should also pump up their lower muscle groups. A second later, several ghouls rushed towards the chickens in the hope of overpowering them and bringing their juicy and protein-soaked bodies to the village. At this moment, Yu Han was confident that after this, the ghouls would definitely be able to defeat the chickens. However, despite all the efforts of the ghouls and all their confidence in their abilities, the huge chickens were still able to easily repel the attack of the ghouls. At this moment, Yu Han and the ghouls began to think about what they had done wrong, that the chickens still continued to fight them off without any difficulty. Then Yu Han realized that during all the time that the ghouls got to the hunting site, their lower muscles were very exhausted, which made them very weak. Yu Han was ashamed that this realization came to him too late, 
and he believed that under such conditions, the ghouls would not be able to do anything with these chickens. After the chickens dealt with all the ghouls, they immediately began to look at Yu Han. With each passing second, the chickens screamed louder, letting Yu Han know that they were going to deal with Yu Han the same way they dealt with the ghouls. Even though Yu Han had gone an equally long way with the ghouls, his muscles were still more toned, and he had a much better chance of defeating a crowd of huge mad chickens. Huge chickens begin to train hard from birth so that later they can grow into large and strong birds. As chickens get bigger, they also continue to exercise their muscles, and they keep getting bigger and stronger. Due to constant training, adult chickens can become quite strong opponents that few can defeat so easily. However, despite all his strength, Yu Han still managed to defeat the huge chickens and bring their bodies to the ghoul village. After a very successful hunt, Yu Han told the ghouls that even though they were unable to defeat the chickens on their own this time, they were still making good progress in their training. Yu Han wanted the ghouls to eat well this evening so that their muscles could recover and they could have a chance to deal with the chickens on their own on the next hunt. After all the chicken was ready for consumption, Yu Han began eating with the ghouls. And after such a hearty dinner, Yu Han did 300 push-ups with the ghouls. The next morning, Yu Han gathered all the ghouls together to tell them about their plans for the day. Yu Han told the ghouls that in order to master everything he taught them, they must go hunting on their own and put all their skills into practice. After Yu Han told the ghouls about their mission, they thought that this time they would hunt without Yu Han. However, Yu Han told the ghouls that first he should train a little, after which he would join the hunt. Yu Han also told the ghouls that for a real athlete, training should be more important than any battles and battles, after which the ghouls went hunting. When the ghouls went hunting, Yu Han looked at the mountains and thought that his crossover was too light to train properly, and that he should also take the old ghoul lord hunting. After some time, the ghouls reached the hunting spot, and before starting the hunt, they thought that with their current form, they had a chance of defeating the huge chickens. The ghouls also believed that if chickens were able to evolve today, they would be putting themselves at great risk. At first, the ghouls wanted to train a little and return to the village, but one of the ghouls felt that Yu Han and the old ghoul lord did not tell them about the conditions under which the hunt could be considered successful. The ghouls understood that a chicken that evolved would pose a great threat to them, and they believed that Yu Han brought 27 ordinary chickens and one chicken that evolved to the village. Then, this ghoul thought that the hunt could be considered successful if they managed to catch 50 ordinary chickens before Yu Han joined the hunt. Later, this ghoul suggested that all the other ghouls divide into three groups, and in case of danger, they will signal each other with their pectoral muscles. After this, the ghouls chose three commanders-in-chief and divided into three groups, after which the ghouls prepared to begin the hunt. Meanwhile, the Knights of Werdo County finally managed to reach the place where Yu Han left the remains of the giant rooster he had eaten. The first thing Hendard noticed was that the head of the giant rooster was separate from the body, and he believed that someone had used very strong magic to defeat the rooster. The blog speculated that the only one who could harness such powerful magic could be the royal high mage Adam. At one point, Blog began to doubt that they would be able to cope with this task at all, but Raper and Hendard reassured him and told him that they would not let him be offended. Such excessive concern began to irritate Blog greatly, and he told Raper and Hendard that they should concentrate on the task, and at that moment they heard a strange rustling nearby. Raper and Hendard immediately ordered Blog to retreat back, hoping that they would now have to engage in another battle. A few seconds later, several huge chickens ran out of the bushes, as if they were running away from something. Behind the huge chickens were ghouls, one of the groups of which had already managed to catch half of the required number of chickens. The ghouls were so carried away by hunting chickens that they did not even immediately notice the knights, towards whom the chickens ran. Raper looked at the pumped-up ghouls and said that it was the first time in his life that he had seen these creatures, and he told Handard to stay with Blog and protect him. However, despite the current situation, Blog was still annoyed that Raper and Hendard did not allow him to take part in the battle. Suddenly, the ghouls finally paid attention to the people and stopped, as they believed that the people were extremely cruel creatures who enjoyed killing. At this moment, the ghouls simply froze in place, as they believed that any one rash decision could provoke a conflict between humans and ghouls. At this point, the ghouls began trying to signal with their chest muscles to call other groups of ghouls for help. Blog looked at the ghouls and did not understand what they were doing, and he believed that in this way, the ghouls were trying to appear even more dangerous. With each passing second, more and more ghouls began to use chest summoning to ensure that the remaining groups of ghouls arrived on the scene as quickly as possible. Huge chickens watched the ghouls use pectoral summoning, which caused some chickens to evolve. The blog was looking at how one of the chickens evolved, 
and he remembered that one such chicken had the strength of one wyvern. After a few seconds, all the chickens evolved, and then all these chickens ran towards the ghouls. However, despite the danger that arose, the ghouls still stood in place and continued to use the technique of summoning other ghouls with their pectoral muscles. Soon, ghouls from other groups arrived at the summoning site and prepared to defend themselves from the angry chickens. When all the ghouls arrived at the battle site, they immediately prepared to use the secret technique that Yu Han had once taught them. One day, one of the ghouls was doing a bench press with a very heavy barbel, and at one point he felt that he could no longer consistently support the weight of this barbel. At that moment, Yu Han approached the ghoul, grabbed the barbell with one hand, and told the ghoul that if one day he was unable to complete the exercise, he could turn to someone for insurance. Yu Han also asked the ghoul what he could do to feel his strength without putting anyone in danger. At this moment, the ghouls lined up in front of the chickens in such a way that three ghouls stood behind the fourth ghoul and began to support him. Thanks to this stance, the fourth ghoul could, with the help of the other three ghouls, direct all his strength to neutralize the chickens. This force was enough to grab the chicken by the head without any fear and begin to hold it. The secret of such support is that the ghoul who stands in front can, without any fear, direct all his forces to neutralize the chicken. Thanks to this technique, the ghouls easily managed to neutralize even those chickens that had managed to evolve. However, at one moment, all the ghouls noticed that one of the ghouls was left without support. Despite the almost complete absence of any chance of victory and the fact that this ghoul was left without support, he only looked at the other ghouls and wished them good luck in the battle. The rest of the ghouls could not allow at least one ghoul to be left without support, but they also could not stop supporting other ghouls. A second later, the lone ghoul felt someone stand behind him and begin to support him. The blog tried to somehow help this ghoul hold his defense, while Raper and Hendard began to fight off the remaining chickens. This ghoul believed that these people were able to answer the call of the pectoral muscles and decided to help them. However, at that moment, when Raper and Hendard fought off all the chickens, a very large chicken appeared on the battlefield, which was many times larger and stronger than all the other chickens. This chicken was so big that it could be compared in size to a real dragon. Even before the appearance of all types of creatures, there lived a dragon on these lands, which was considered the greatest lover of hunting among other dragons. This dragon was afraid that sooner or later the later dragons would surpass him in everything, and so this dragon decided to take advantage of the division of power. Thanks to this division of power, creatures such as modern dragons and huge chickens appeared on Earth. Hendard believed that despite the fact that this chicken was much inferior in strength to an ordinary dragon, he believed that if he could defeat it, he would receive approval from his mentor. After these thoughts, Hendard and Raper decided to try to defeat this giant chicken. Meanwhile, Yu Han continued to train on one of the homemade crossovers. During training, Yu Han noticed that compared to ghouls, his muscle mass was gaining much more slowly. Despite such a big difference in muscle growth, Yu Han was still pleased to know that the ghouls were trying so hard to be athletes like him. At that moment, Yu Han remembered the days when he first met the ghouls and ended up in their village. It's been three months since Yu Han started training these ghouls, and Yu Han remembers with fondness the first days of their training together. Yu Han was very pleased to realize that despite the fact that at first many ghouls wanted to give up, he managed to motivate them to continue improving their muscles. Thanks to Yu Han, the ghouls acquired such spiritual qualities as desire, perseverance, and determination, thanks to which they became what they have become now. At that moment, Yu Han realized that he was enjoying the ghoul's success as much as if he himself had achieved the results that the ghouls had achieved. Then Yu Han thought that now he could use some advice from his coach, but he remembered that his coach had mysteriously disappeared at about the same age as him. At that moment, one of the ghouls came running to Yu Han, who wanted to inform Yu Han about the most unpleasant news. When the ghoul ran to Yu Han, he informed him that the huge chickens had evolved, and now they posed a serious threat to them. This ghoul feared that if they didn't take action, sooner or later they might all die. After that, Yu Han sat up in the air and asked the ghoul which direction he should go. After the ghoul indicated the direction in which the fight with the chickens was taking place, a message appeared in front of Yu Han that due to excess energy, his combat muscle contraction skill may be unstable. After this, Yu Han temporarily turned off his martial muscle contraction skill, causing his muscles to begin to grow to impossible sizes. At this moment, Yu Han only thought that he must quickly save the ghouls that he had been training so hard all this time. As Yu Han's muscles continued to grow, the ground beneath his feet began to tremble. After the muscles on Yu Han's legs became large enough, Yu Han took a leap and immediately found himself high in the sky. Yu Han jumped so high that within a second of his jump, the goblin could not see him in the sky. 
Meanwhile, Raper and Hendard continued to fight against the giant chicken. During the fight, Raper asked Hendard to distract the chicken so he could try to attack its vital organs. At this moment, Hendard used a technique of scattering sand, which was supposed to blind the chicken. After performing this maneuver, Hendard told the blog that he deliberately bought some time so that he could run to safety. However, Blog told Hander that instead of trying to save him, he could attack the chicken and help Raper disarm it. At this moment, Raper was briefly distracted from the fight, which is why the huge chicken was able to successfully attack Raper. At the moment of the fall, the attacked Raper straightened his arm, raised his thumb up, and told Hander that he was doing well, since he was able to distract the chicken on himself. This angered Blog even more, and he told Raper and Hander that instead of trying to protect him, they should concentrate on the battle. As Raper fell to the ground, Hendard told Raper that the blog was paying attention to them after all, and Raper gave him his thumbs up again. Soon the chicken was about to attack Hendard, and then Hendard told the blog to run away as quickly as possible, since he believed that he and Raper would not be able to defeat this chicken. However, Blog believed that he was unlikely to be able to outrun the chicken in time, and that he would definitely not be able to escape. But the goblins behind said that they could not give up so easily. At this point, the ghouls began to gather in a large pyramid, thereby creating a massive array of unified support. The chickens began to try to demolish the large pyramid of ghouls, but the ghouls still continued to withstand all the blows. The ghouls continued to withstand all the blows of the chickens and hoped that very soon Yu Han would be here and help them. Over time, the blows of the chickens became even stronger, and it was already extremely difficult for the ghouls to withstand these blows. After some time, the giant chicken struck the pyramid of ghouls with such a strong blow that the pyramid of ghouls simply collapsed. Many ghouls fell to the ground and were badly injured, and in this state they could not continue to fight. At that moment, the giant chicken prepared to deal a decisive blow to the ghouls, and the ghouls could not resist it in any way. However, a second later the ghouls saw something fall from the sky onto the chicken, which immediately killed the chicken. At this moment, the ghouls were incredibly happy that Yu Han had finally arrived here to help them. However, at that moment, the old ghoul lord came out of the smoke, increased the weight of his arm with the help of his skills, and finished off the giant chicken. A couple of seconds after the ghouls saw the old ghoul lord, something else fell to the ground. This time, the ghouls saw how Yu Han made a slight mistake with the trajectory of his flight and landed a little further than his target. After a couple of seconds, the giant chickens arrived at the old ghoul lord and surrounded him. At that moment, the old ghoul lord began to show all his fearlessness in front of the chickens. Blog looked at the old ghoul lord and thought that he was the leader of the ghouls since he was able to deal with one of the chickens so easily. Then one of the ghouls approached Blog and told him that this ghoul, who was able to defeat one of the chickens, was their former lord. With each passing second, more and more chickens began to approach the old ghoul lord, which made him very scared. At this moment, the rest of the ghouls were watching the old ghoul lord and hoping that he must have some kind of plan. The old ghoul lord told the other ghouls that he actually had a plan to defeat all these chickens. A second later, the old ghoul lord knelt down and began calling Yu Han for help as loudly as possible. While the old ghoul lord hoped that Yu Han would come to his call, the rest of the ghouls became extremely uncomfortable, looking at their old lord's current situation. Every second, the old ghoul lord became more and more afraid, and he did not know what he needed to do in this current situation. A few hours earlier, the old ghoul lord had woken up to find himself alone in the entire village, and he figured today's hunt was taking a little longer than usual. Suddenly, the old ghoul lord felt a strong rumbling in his stomach, and he thought it would be a good idea to join in on today's hunt. Also, the old ghoul lord decided that the giant rooster had long ago fallen at the hands of Yu Han, and therefore there would be no threat to him on the way to today's hunting spot. Five minutes before his arrival, the old ghoul lord heard the cries of the remaining ghouls who had gone out hunting today. At this moment, the old ghoul lord decided that he must help his subordinates as soon as possible. A couple of seconds later, the old ghoul lord found a large and heavy boulder nearby, which he was about to throw at the chickens. First, the old lord grabbed a large boulder and used his skill on it to reduce the weight of this stone tenfold. After that, the old ghoul lord easily threw the cobblestone into the sky, after which he returned the cobblestone to its original weight. Unlike the other ghouls, the old lord did not train with Yu Han and did not develop his muscles. However, despite the fact that the old ghoul lord's physique remained virtually unchanged, he did not become weaker than the other ghouls. The thing was that during training, the old ghoul lord often used his waiting skill to weigh down the various objects that Yu Han trained with. Due to the constant use of his skill, the old ghoul lord's waiting skill level gradually increased, allowing him to reduce and increase the weight of objects even more. At the moment, the old ghoul lord couldn't even imagine how he could defeat a whole crowd of angry chickens single-handedly, 
Then one of the ghouls told his old lord that since he was able to defeat one of the chickens so easily, then perhaps he was as strong as Yuhan. At this moment, the old ghoul lord thought that in fact, few people would be able to deal with the giant chicken so easily. Also, the old ghoul lord thought that if he had been holding the title of ghoul lord since birth, it would even be ridiculous to compare his strength with the strength of his subjects. At this moment, the old ghoul lord was simply filled with confidence in his abilities, and he believed that if he tried a little, he could easily defeat the other chickens. However, within a second, one of the chickens hit the old ghoul lord with such force that the old ghoul lord simply flew high into the sky. The rest of the ghouls watched their former lord fly away somewhere far away and thought that they definitely had no chance against these chickens. Meanwhile, Blog decided that this was the end of him, and then he apologized to Raper and Handard for not always laughing at their jokes. At the time, Raper and Hendard told the Blog that they never joked, which made the current situation even more depressing. However, Blog was still confident that Raper and Hendard continued to joke, after which he thanked them for everything they did for him. After that, Blog took out his sword and shield and said that he was not going to die alone, since he had ghouls with him, whom he had already begun to consider his friends. Then the ghouls also prepared for the fact that they would have to fight, despite the fact that at the moment, the chances were high that they could die today. After this, the ghouls rushed to attack the chickens, mentally thanking Yu Han for all his training. The ghouls were confident that it was thanks to Yu Han's grueling training that they became so strong. The ghouls looked at the knights and thought that despite their training, they never managed to become truly strong. The ghouls also thought that if rebirth was possible, then in the next life they would also like to train with Yu Han. By that time, the old ghoul lord had managed to land in the same place where Yu Han had landed. The exhausted old ghoul lord begged Yu Han to save the rest of the ghouls. At this moment, Yu Han decided to use the call of his pectoral muscles to direct all the chickens towards himself. Meanwhile, the ghouls just started trying to attack the giant chickens. However, during the attack of the ghouls, the chickens only ran around them and headed in one direction. The ghouls did not understand where the chickens ran, and then they decided to follow them. Meanwhile, Yu Han continued to use the pectoral call until the chickens came running to him. Soon, all the chickens came running to Yu Han, and then Yu Han activated his composure skill. After activating the composure skill, Yu Han began to feel how he was overwhelmed by a previously unknown power, and how an incomprehensible calmness enveloped him. Meanwhile, the ghouls, together with the knights, headed in the same direction where the chickens ran. Soon, the ghouls felt the power of the call of the pectoral muscles, and then they decided that Yu Khan had deliberately used this technique to direct all the chickens to himself. At this moment, Blog did not understand what these ghouls were talking about and who Yu Hna was. Then one of the ghouls told the Blog that Yu Han Sol is their mentor and the best muscle training master. Blog still didn't fully understand who Yu Han really was, and this ghoul told Blog that he would understand everything when he saw Yu Han in person. Then one of the ghouls said that this explanation was indeed not clear and understandable enough, and he asked his comrade to tell the blog more about Yu Han. However, the ghoul added in his explanation that Yu Han Sol was their new lord, but the blog still did not understand who Yu Han was. Meanwhile, the chickens had already reached Yu Han and were preparing to attack him. However, Yu Han manages to use the moves from the one arm press, which allowed Yu Han to disarm one of the chickens. Yu Han's blow was so strong that he managed to send the attacked chicken high into the sky. After such a powerful blow from Yu Han, the two closest chickens jumped up, which made it seem that these chickens were simply scared and decided to retreat. However, as they jumped, the hens turned towards each other, feet first, and grabbed each other's legs. Thanks to this grip, the chickens were able to double the force of their punch and land directly on Yu Han. Despite such a strong blow, Yu Han was able to withstand such a blow and prepare to strike back. After this, Yu Han decided to use the military press technique to try to free himself from under the giant chicken paws. However, at the same second, Several more chickens also began to try to pin Yu Han to the ground with their paws. After a couple of seconds, the chickens managed to pin Yu Han to the ground again in the hope that he would no longer be able to attack them in any way. Then, Yu Hanu used a press press, thanks to which he was able to break through the giant chicken paws. After that, Yu Han grabbed the toes of one of the chickens, swung his arms as hard as possible, and flew towards the chicken's head as quickly as possible. During the flight, Yu Han performed a flip in the air, thanks to which he was able to deliver a serious blow to the face of one of the chickens. Yu Han's blow was so powerful that the chicken was unable to get up and continue fighting. After delivering the blow, Yu Han said that he specifically used the pectoral call to call all the chickens to him and defeat them all alone. Yu Han also said that with his pectoral calls, he was able to easily touch the chicken's souls, and he wondered if they could do the same to him.
After that, Yu Han performed a burpee test, after completing which he gained speed and struck another chicken with a strong blow. After that, Yu Han stuck his hands as deep underground as possible, while the chickens were distracted by the lifeless body of one of the chickens. After that, Yu Han suddenly raised his hands from under the ground, causing a very powerful shock pulse to start running across the ground. Yu Han's shockwave was so powerful that all the chickens within a radius of several tens of meters immediately found themselves in the air. Before the chickens could get to their feet again, Yu Han pulled one of the trees out of the ground and prepared to perform jump squats. After several repetitions, Yu Han began to throw a huge and heavy log from one chicken to another, parallel with this log from one chicken to another. After a few seconds, Yu Han jumped as high as possible and prepared to perform one repetition of the triceps strengthening exercise. After the first repetition, Yu Han threw this log at the head of one of the chickens, causing it to fall to the ground and stop showing any signs of life. By this time, the ghouls had already arrived at the battle site along with the knights. The blog looked at Yu Han and did not understand how it was possible that a person could be a ghoul lord. The blog also thought that Yu Han could not be human, since he possessed such power that no human could control it. Meanwhile, Yu Han was thinking that during the time it took him to get here, his legs were very tired. Then Yu Han began to be haunted by doubts about his ability to complete this battle. However, Yu Han believed that if he gave up, he would no longer be able to look into the eyes of the old ghoul lord, who had repeatedly helped him in every training session. Then Yu Han decided that in this case he would have to finish this battle with one strong blow. Yu Han then decided to perform one rep of the chest press and would have to increase the size of his muscles to achieve maximum punching power. At this moment, Yu Han activated his accelerated muscle recovery skill, but even so, Yu Han's legs could barely support his entire upper body stably. With each passing second, all the muscles in Yu Han's upper body, including his pectoral muscles, became larger, attracting more and more chickens. At this moment, Yu Han began to feel several hands touching his back. Yu Han looked back and saw how all the ghouls, along with the knights, began to support him. While the ghouls and knights supported Yu Han, Yu Han performed one repetition of the chest press, which caused a powerful shockwave. Yu Han's shockwave was powerful enough to defeat all the chickens at once. After all the chickens were neutralized, Yu Han, along with the ghouls and knights, fell to the ground from fatigue. At this moment, Yu Han was thinking about how they would never see the old lord again, and Yu Han told the ghouls that he would miss their old lord. The ghouls were discussing that before Yu Han came, their old lord was very evil. And after Yu Han came to their village, their old lord became a good leader. Suddenly, at one moment, Yu Han thought that since the old ghoul lord was no longer there, someone else would have to help him with his training. Yu Han then looked at the ghouls, but the ghouls made it clear that they did not want to help Yu Han. And then Yu Han called the ghouls traitors. While Yu Han promised to take revenge on the ghouls with the most brutal training, the old ghoul lord sat next to Yu Han and told him that he had done a good job. Only after a couple of seconds did Yu Han and the ghouls notice that the old ghoul lord was still alive. The old ghoul lord didn't understand why everyone started looking at him with such surprise, and he said that he decided to take a little nap and not interfere in the battle. Yu Han and the ghouls were incredibly glad that their old lord was still alive. Yu Han and the ghouls immediately attacked the old ghoul lord in a crowd and began to hug him. And for a moment, the old ghoul lord thought that in this way, he could really be killed. Yu Han told the old ghoul lord that he was very glad that he was alive, and then Yu Han asked the old ghoul lord to continue helping him with his training. Soon the knights returned back to the county and reported everything to Count Huerto and the captain of the knightly guard. The knights informed Count Huerto that it was Yu Han who defeated the giant rooster and helped them fight off the attack of the giant chickens. At this moment, Count Huerto thought that the ghouls did not pose any threat to them, but Yu Han could turn out to be an extremely dangerous opponent. A little later, the captain of the knightly guard noticed that Blog had not returned, and she wanted to find out from the knights why he had not returned. At this moment, tears suddenly appeared under the eyes of Raper and Handard due to the fact that they were unable to return Blog. After Yu Han defeated all the chickens in the area, he immediately began to examine Bloga from all sides. This behavior of Yu Han did not please Raper and Handard, which caused them to become very angry with Yu Han. After days, the drop for Raper and Handard was when Yu Han called Blog a thing, and then they decided to attack Yu Han. At this moment, Yu Han believed that Blog wanted to become stronger, and Blog wanted to warn Yu Han that Raper and Hendard were going to attack him. At this moment, Yu Han stopped Raper and Hendard's attack with his bare hands, and Yu Han asked Blog again if he wanted to become stronger. Yu Han then told Blog that if he did bodybuilding with him, he could become even stronger than his friends. 
The blog listened to Yu Han and did not understand what Yu Han was even talking about and what he meant by bodybuilding. Raper and Hendard told the captain of the night guard that they had no choice but to leave Bloga with Yu Han. At that moment, Raper and Hendard bowed down before the captain of the nightly guard and began to beg her to help them return Blog. Count Werdo believed that bodybuilding was a kind of black magic, and he believed that despite such a tragic loss of a knight, it would be too risky to try to resist Yu Han. Also, Count Huerdo believed that the captain of the nightly guard was not so emotional as to succumb to feelings and go after the lost knight. However, at this moment, the captain of the nightly guard began to be overwhelmed with various emotions, and she ordered Raper and Handard to go right now to save Blog. Count Weirdo wanted to tell the captain of the nightly guard that she should not give in to her emotions, but the captain of the guard no longer listened to Count Weirdo. The guard captain said that Yu Han had captured her student and that this was already crossing all acceptable boundaries. The guard captain believed that today they needed to restore order in the alley mines, and Raper and Henedard were very glad that the guard captain decided to help them free their friend. The next day, Blog joined the ghoul village, and that same day, Blog prepared for his first training session. The first thing Yu Han wanted to do was show Blog how to do squats correctly, but Blog didn't know what they were. Yu Han assumed that Blog might not understand some of the things he was telling him, so he asked Blog to come to him to explain everything to him. When Blog approached Yu Han, Yu Han began to tell him what squats are and how to do them correctly. After that, Yu Han asked Blog to repeat the squat that he showed him, and then Yu Han realized that it was worth showing Blog how to do squats correctly. Yu Han also explained that while squatting, a person should simply sit down and stand up, repeating these actions in the correct position so as not to accidentally get injured. After Blog stood up again, Yu Han asked him to spread his legs hip width apart. Once the legs were positioned correctly, Blog had to point his knees slightly outward and sit up with the help of his pelvis and knees. After Blog has fixed his position, he needs to direct his forces into the pelvis and hips, after which he must push off the ground and stand in his original position. After performing the first squat, Yu Han praised Blog and felt that Blog had already practiced sports before, but Blog said that he had only practiced swordsmanship before. After a couple of seconds, Yu Han took out a barbell and asked Blog to try squatting with it. When Blog bent his knees, he stretched his arms up, after which Yu Han handed him a barbell and asked him to try with this barbell. The Blog took the heavy barbell in his hands and began to try to get it into the original position. Yu Han stood in front of Blog and made sure that Blog did not get out of position and stood on his feet from the correct position. After a few seconds, Blog still managed to successfully squat with the barbell in his hands. Yu Han then removed the bar while the ghouls praised Blog for his efforts. At this moment, Yu Han looked at Blog and was amazed that Blog could so easily perform squats with the maximum weight of the barbell and not even disturb his body position during the exercise. Yu Han then felt that he was indeed not mistaken in that Blog had enough potential to become as strong as him. A couple of minutes later, Yu Han asked Blog why he still agreed to follow him and start training. Then Blog told Yu Han that he wants to become as strong as Raper and Hendard, who constantly protect him from all possible dangers. Yu Han then told Blog that he could hardly make himself as strong as his friends. Blog said to Yu Han with sadness in his voice that he was actually confident that a simple guy like him could not become as strong as Raper and Hendard. However, despite all his self-doubt, Blog was still very grateful to Yu Han for offering to help him gain strength comparable to that of his friends. However, Yu Han told the Blog that he would become strong in a slightly different sense and that he could acquire a strength that would be simply incomparable to that of his friends. Yu Han also told Blog that he has the most valuable talent that few people in this world can have. Blog was deeply touched by such words since it was the first time someone praised him. Suddenly, Blog couldn't control his emotions, causing him to start crying. But Yu Han told Blog that he shouldn't cry as he believed that crying could negatively affect his future muscle development. The next morning, Yu Han and the ghouls went to their previous hunting ground to take several huge chicken chicks with them to the village. Yu Han told the old ghoul lord that these chickens can also be eaten, but if you cook and eat them all at once, their population may be greatly reduced. Yu Han also said that it is worth trying to breed these chickens at home, making it a kind of huge chicken farm. The old ghoul lord feared that when these chickens grew up, no one except Yu Han would be able to defeat them on their own, so that they could then be cooked and eaten. Even though many ghouls had become even stronger, the old ghoul lord was afraid that if these chickens evolved, then no one except Yu Han would be able to handle them. At this moment, Yu Han noticed that the old ghoul lord was speaking like some kind of insecure weakling, and he began to look at the old ghoul lord with some degree of judgment. The old ghoul lord was very frightened by Yu Han's look, 
and then he said that they could still cope with these chickens, after which Yu Han immediately stopped showing his ominous gaze. After Yu Han and the ghouls took the chicks of the huge chickens, they began training, during which everyone squatted with heavy barbells. Blog also did barbell squats, but unlike the others, he was helped by the old ghoul lord. First, the old ghoul lord reduced the weight of Blog's barbell by 10 times so that he could prepare for the sudden increase in weight of the barbell. As soon as Blog started doing squats, the old ghoul lord immediately increased the weight of Blog's barbell to two times its original weight. With each repetition, Blog's barbell became heavier, but he still continued to perform squats and did not break the rhythm, despite the severe pain and the heavy weight of the barbell. Meanwhile, Yu Han and the rest of the ghouls also continued to perform barbell squats. The ghouls found it very difficult to continue holding the barbell, and each time they squatted slower. At one point, a strong shock pulse passed through the ground, which was caused by some stranger and thereby interrupted the training. Despite such a strong blow, all the ghouls survived and received virtually no serious injuries. At that moment, the captain of the knightly guard of the county of Weirdo appeared before the old lord, and she asked the old lord if he had kidnapped her former student. The old ghoul lord thought that this was some kind of misunderstanding, and then he explained to the captain of the guard that for some time now, he was not a ghoul lord. A second after the old ghoul lord responded, the captain of the guard told the old lord that he should have answered her yes or no, after which she readied her sword to get rid of the old lord. At the moment of impact, something prevented the captain of the guard from killing the old ghoul lord, which is why another shockwave appeared at the site of the impact. At the moment of impact, Yuhan covered the body of the old ghoul lord with his hand and asked the guard captain who she was and what she wanted. The guard captain thought that Yu Han was far from an ordinary person if he managed to survive after her blow. Meanwhile, Yu Han thought that the guard captain was extremely strong since she managed to leave a small scratch on his arm with her sword. After this, the captain of the guard put away her sword and asked Raper and Handard if this was the man who took Blog from them. Raper and Hendard confirmed that it was Yu Han who took Blog with him. Also, Raper and Hendard saw Blog and began to beg him to leave the ghoul village and return back to them. The guard captain apologized to Yu Han for having to interrupt his training, after which she demanded Yu Han to return her student to her. Yu Han felt a little embarrassed by the current situation, and he told the Blog that it was extremely impolite to keep silent about the fact that he already had a coach, and even more so to leave her without warning. At this point, the Blog felt very ashamed of its recklessness, and it could not say anything in its own defense. Then Yu Han jokingly told Blog that recently training his muscles had become much more interesting to Blog than fencing. Blog felt very ashamed of his behavior, and then he began to apologize to the captain of the guard for deciding to quit fencing and start bodybuilding. Blog also told the captain of the guard that despite the fact that she had gone through such a difficult journey for him, he would like to continue to engage in bodybuilding. After a couple of seconds, the captain of the guard took out her sword and said that since her student made the wrong decision for himself, then she would have to resolve this issue by force. The guard captain was about to strike again with lightning speed, but this time Yu Han managed to parry her attack. The guard captain noticed that this time she managed to leave only a small scratch on Yu Han's body, and she told Yu Han that his actions greatly hurt her pride. Then the captain of the guard believed that Blog really wanted the same muscles as Yu Han, and Blog confirmed her theory. Then the captain of the guard suggested that Yu Han resolve all the issues in a duel, and whoever can win will continue to train Blog. The captain of the guard also said that it is the winner's martial art that will be able to show what kind of training can make Blog stronger. However, Yu Han explained to the guard captain that bodybuilding is not a martial art, but some form of self-education and overcoming the complexities of a person's own will. However, the captain of the guard reminded Yu Han that it was he who defeated the giant rooster, to which Yu Han said that he just needed to get food to survive in this world. Then the captain of the guard considered that since bodybuilding is not intended for combat, then there is no practical benefit from it. These words infuriated Yu Han very much, and he demanded that she take back her words. However, the guard captain realized that these words were starting to make Yu Han angry, and she continued to claim that bodybuilding was of no use. Finally, the captain of the guard told Yu Han that bodybuilding is complete nonsense, which is practiced only by those who simply have nowhere to spend their time. The guard captain's words infuriated Yu Han so much that he activated the leg lengthening skill, and Yu Han demanded that the captain fight a battle to show her what real bodybuilding was. After some time, all the ghouls in the village gathered to watch Yu Han's fight with the guard captain, and they were wondering which of them would be stronger. One of the ghouls drew the attention of the others to such a noticeable difference in physical form, 
and they were confident that Yu Han would win without any problems. However, the blog told the ghouls that despite such a modest physique, the guard captain was one of the ten strongest warriors on the continent. Before the battle began, Yu Han decided to use his hawk vision skill to assess the physical parameters of the guard captain. The hawk's vision showed Yu Han that the guard captain did not have as strong muscles as him, and then Yu Han could not understand how she was able to inflict such damage on him with such a physique. Suddenly, the captain of the guard asked Yu Han what bodybuilding, which he is so actively involved in, is all about. Immediately after this, the guard captain jumped up and attacked Yu Han with one of his fighting techniques. Yu Han still couldn't understand what kind of power allowed her to use such powerful techniques. The guard captain told Yu Han that thanks to her combat energy, she could easily deal with her enemies with minimal effort. After that, the captain of the guard dealt Yu Han several more powerful blows, with which she was able to push Yu Han a short distance. After her blow, the guard captain wanted to tell Yu Han why she called him a foreigner, despite the fact that he looked like a man. However, Yu Han said that he didn't care what she called him, after which Yu Han was about to strike his first blow. The guard captain managed to dodge Yu Han's attack, after which she said that she saw that he was surrounded by scarlet mana. The captain of the guard also said that scarlet mana is possessed either by powerful demonic entities or unusual aliens. In addition, the captain of the guard believed that in battle, Yu Han uses techniques such as increasing her size. After this, the guard captain was about to strike hard on the ground, hoping to hit Yu Han, but Yu Han managed to dodge her attack. Then, Yu Han told the captain of the guard that his body could change due to the fact that he was making enormous efforts to do so. The guard captain felt that these words from Yu Han only confirmed her theory that Yu Han was either an alien or a demon in human form. The captain of the guard also said that ordinary people of this world can compensate for the limitations of their physical capabilities with combat energy or mana. After this, the captain of the guard used a skill that creates many magical swords in the sky, which can themselves be directed towards her enemy. After a couple of seconds, these magic swords simultaneously headed straight towards Yu Han, who was very difficult to survive such a serious blow. After such an attack, Yu Han fell to the ground, and the guard captain said that bodybuilding could not surpass the strength of swordsmanship. However, Yu Han said that despite all the advantages of fencing, the enemy cannot stand still. Then Yu Han added that a person cannot know how strong today's opponent can become stronger tomorrow. However, the captain of the guard said that in this case, she would be able to make sure that her current enemy simply did not live to see the next day. After this, Yu Hana immediately got into a double biceps pose, withstanding all subsequent attacks from the guard captain. At this moment, Yu Han said that everyone who goes to the gym becomes a better person than the person they were yesterday. At this moment, Yu Han's muscles began to grow at a rapid speed, causing the overall volume of his body to rapidly increase. In a couple of seconds, Yu Han became ten times larger and stronger than an ordinary person, and this time the guard captain had practically no chance against such an opponent. Meanwhile, the blog continued to watch Yu Han's fight with the guard captain, and at one point, Raper and Hendard approached him. Raper and Hendard apologized to the blog for bringing the guard captain with them to save him. Also, Raper and Hendard were afraid that if they turned to the captain of the guard for help, the blog would begin to hate them both. However, the blog did not understand why Raper and Hendard decided that he would hate them. Hendard then said that he and Raper believed that he left them because they constantly put moral and psychological pressure on him. However, blog immediately explained to Raper and Hendard that he left because he simply wanted to pursue bodybuilding, after which he would immediately return back to the county. Hearing this, Raper and Hendard immediately calmed down and were glad that the blog was going to return to them. Raper and Hendard also told the blog that since he decided to train, they would like to start training with him. However, blog himself did not fully understand what he could teach Raper and Hendard, and then he asked the old ghoul lord to help him train his friends. While Yu Han continued to fight with the guard captain, the old ghoul lord said that he would be happy to train new students. Before the training began, the blog wanted to start training Raper and Handard the same way they once began their training with the captain of the guard. Raper thought that the blog was talking about leg training, and the blog confirmed his guesses. First, the blog spoke to Raper and Handard about squats and how beneficial this exercise is for the hip muscles. While the blog was adding weight to the training bar, he was talking about Yu Han, talking about how important it is to keep the correct posture while doing squats. The old ghoul lord watched as Blog added weight to the bar, and he figured that much weight might be too much for Raper and Handard's first workout. However, Blog said that Raper and Handard would be fine as he was going to give them support during the squats. Meanwhile, Yu Han still continued to fight with the guard captain, and during the battle, Yu Han began to count as if he was doing some kind of exercise. At some moments, 
Yu Han slightly weakened the strength of his movements, which caused the guard captain to pull Yu Han's hand away from him a little back. The guard captain noticed that Yu Han was cyclically strengthening and weakening his arm, and then she asked him why he was weakening his arm. However, Yu Han said that this was not a loosening, but a deliberate pulling of the arm towards the body as he performed squeezing and stretching of the arm muscles. Suddenly, the captain of the guard heard loud groans coming from the audience, which were very similar to the groans of Raper and Handard. Meanwhile, Raper and Hendard continued to perform barbell squats, and then Yu Han left the battlefield and told everyone that he was also going to do some squats after Raper. The guard captain immediately became embarrassed when she saw Raper and Hendard training. Yu Hana explained to the guard captain that her knights were currently doing weight-bearing squats. The captain of the guards told Yu Hana with a perverted expression that now she also wants Raper and Hendard to continue bodybuilding. From these words, Yu Han returned to his normal state and asked the captain of the guard what she experienced when she saw her knights training. The guard captain said that at that moment, she felt disproportionate passion and that she liked to watch the sweat dripping from the muscles of Raper and Handard. After these words, Yu Han and the guard captain shook hands and agreed that Yu Han could continue to train blog. After the fight, Yu Han learned that the guard captain's name was Ryan, and when she mounted her horse, he noticed something unusual about her. Yu Han noticed how much Ryan's forearms were pumped up, and he wanted to ask her what sport she did to pump them up so much. Ryan thought that Yu Han was just joking, but Yu Han was actually curious to know how she had built up such powerful forearms. Ryan then said that she constantly swings her sword, and she assumed that it was because of this that her forearms became stronger. But she was also curious to know what Yu Han thought about it. Ryan also thought about the fact that Yu Han trains everyone for practically nothing, and then she asked him what she could do for him to repay him for his efforts. However, Yu Han said that he had not thought about it at all, and he believed that the more people knew about his training, the better. After that, Yu Han, along with Ryan and the rest of the humans and ghouls, went to Weirdo County, and Ryan wondered why Yu Han thought that people might be interested in his training. Yu Han believed that the more people learned about his training, the faster various gyms would begin to appear, and over time, people would create their own training programs. Yu Han also wanted people around the Lysha world to become interested in the idea of pumping and improving their body. Ryan found Yu Han's idea very interesting and worthy, and she said that she would be able to listen to any of his requests, which suited Yu Han very much. Soon evening came, and Yu Han and everyone else decided to take a break. Suddenly something began to bother Blog very much, and he decided to tell Yu Han about it. The Blog said there is a lot of discrimination in Weirdo County. In Weirdo County, this discrimination manifested itself not only between representatives of different species, but also between representatives of different types of magic, religion, and other factors. The blog worried about the fact that some people could dominate not only monsters, but also other people who were different from them. Blog was also afraid that upon arriving in Weirdo County, people would definitely try to hurt the feelings of Yu Han and his ghouls. Yu Han listened to the blog and felt that this was indeed a serious problem for him and his ghouls. The blog then felt it was necessary to wait a little before heading to Weirdo County. After a couple of seconds, Blog watched as Yu Han headed towards the horses. After another couple of seconds, Yu Han began to eat the horse feed from their trough in all seriousness. Even though Yu Han looked a little strange from the outside, he only enjoyed the roughness and hardness of the food, as he believed that this particular food was good for maintaining human health. This very food for maintaining health turned out to be ordinary oats, since oats contained a lot of carbohydrates. However, Yu Han was somewhat upset that oats in this world were only used as horse feed, and he decided that he should solve this problem as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the rest of the people looked at Yu Han eating horse feed, thinking that Yu Han was just another barbarian who didn't care about what he had. Then one of the knights of Weirdo County said that Yu Han was just another monster who didn't know much about food. Then the old ghoul lord approached these people and told these knights that if the monsters heard such words from them, they would be very upset. After that, the old ghoul lord handed these knights a bowl of his food and said that he tried to combine the knights' war provisions with the normal high food, and he wanted the knights to try his dish. The knights could not believe that some ghoul was able to combine their provisions with his food, and they decided to try this dish, since its smell was very tempting. As soon as the knights tasted the old ghoul lord's dish, a real explosion of flavors occurred in their mouths. The knights really liked how the Swedish taste of this dish revealed a very pleasant spiciness. The knights also liked the texture of various spices and the successful combination of products. The old ghoul lord said that if ghouls and humans lived in peace and harmony, he would be happy to share the recipe for this dish, and the knights promised that now they would be more friendly towards ghouls. After some time, Yu Han decided to speak to Ryan, 
and she said that they would continue their journey tomorrow morning, after which she wanted to listen to Yu Han. Yu Han reminded Ryan of her words that she promised to fulfill any of her requests, and Ryan became interested in what Yu Han would ask of her. Yu Han then held out a small pile of oat grains and said that he would like these grains to be provided to him and his ghouls. At that moment, Ryan remembered that Yu Han and his ghouls were raising chickens, and she believed that Yu Han wanted to feed the chickens with these grains. However, Yu Han said with a smile on his face that he and his ghouls would feed on these grains themselves. Ryan then said that if she really gave Yu Han and his ghouls these grains, then she would feel guilty for actually giving them cattle feed. The ghouls also told Yu Khan that Ryan had great influence among people, and they believed that such a unique opportunity should not be used to obtain ordinary livestock feed. Yu Han was greatly angered by the ghoul's words, and then he demanded that the ghouls repeat what they had just said. Ryan said that she kind of agreed with the ghoul's words, since she could do something more for Yu Han and his ghouls. Ryan said that she could easily give the ghouls adventurer armor and build each ghoul a good, durable wooden house. The ghouls also believed that they already had a lot of chicken meat, which was probably many times more nutritious than regular livestock feed. Then, Yu Han said that if you only consume the protein contained in chicken meat, it can negatively affect the liver. Yu Han also explained that if you consume enough carbohydrates, the body will release glycogen, which also has many beneficial properties for the body. Yu Han also said that oats contain many different carbohydrates, which take a long time to be absorbed by the body, which is why the feeling of fullness lasts longer. In addition, Yu Han said that due to its low calorie content and high nutrient content in his world, oats received the title of the king of all grains. After Yu Han's story, the ghouls immediately wanted to start eating oats to increase glycogen levels in the body. The knights found this all a bit strange, and they assumed that Yu Han wanted to become stronger than the captain of their guard. Then the knights decided that in order not to lose any advantage over ghouls and other monsters, they should also try livestock feed. At this point, Blog had already begun to actively eat oats, and Raper and Hander decided that if Blog decided to eat these oats, then they should try it too. After a couple of seconds, everyone began to unanimously try oats to understand how healthy they could actually be. However, after a second, everyone realized how disgusting the oats tasted, which is why everyone immediately spat out all the oats. However, despite the fact that no one liked the taste of oats, the Blog still continued to happily eat oats without stopping. Raper noticed that Blog continued to eat oats, and he told him that he should stop eating because the oats just tasted disgusting. However, Blog told Raper that he liked the toughness and taste of oats, after which he continued eating, which surprised everyone. Even Yu Han was amazed at how happily Blog ate oats, and he believed that with such an appetite, Blog could build strong and strong muscles very quickly. At this point, Ryan told Yu Han that even though she didn't understand much of his explanation, she felt that everyone was happy with the proposal. Ryan then told Yu Han that she would do everything possible to ensure that the Count satisfied all of Yu Han's conditions. Yu Han was very grateful to Ryan for her help, but Ryan still believed that everyone else would say that Yu Han's request was still a loss for him and his ghouls. The next morning, Yu Han, along with Ryan, the ghouls, and the nightly guards, reached Weirdo County. As soon as everyone passed through the gate to Weirdo County, Blog began to feel how all the locals were looking at them. The blog then reminded Yu Han that Weirdo County was one of those places where discrimination was severe. At this moment, the locals began to actively whisper to each other and tirelessly look at Yu Han and his goblins, which is why the situation became more and more tense every second. The ghouls were extremely unfamiliar with the fact that everyone in the area was paying such attention to them. Then Yu Han told one of the ghouls that they should at least pose a little in public and show off their muscles. Yu Han told the ghouls that they looked great, and that was why people couldn't stop looking at them. Then the ghouls thought that they really needed to show everyone their strong muscles. However, the blog was completely sure that there were other reasons why people kept their eyes on the ghouls. Then the ghouls began to line up in various poses, showing off their muscles to the residents of the county. However, now people looked at the ghouls and began to think about why these ghouls were so happy and why they began to get into these strange positions. A few minutes later, Yu Han and Ryan arrived at the fortress of Count Werdo, where Yu Han told the Count his plans for his training. However, the Count did not understand why Yu Han chose cattle feed as a reward for his training. However, Yu Han explained to Count Weirdo that he did not need livestock feed, but the oats contained in this feed, as oats are a key element of a healthy diet. Count Weirdo looked at Yu Han and thought that he was some kind of barbarian, since he dared to talk to him so brazenly. Count Weirdo told Yu Han that he only allowed Yu Han into his fortress because Ryan personally asked him to make an exception for him. 
Count Huerto also said that otherwise his guards would simply start firing at Yuhan and his ghouls at the first opportunity. At this point, Ryan bowed to Count Huerto and thanked him for his tolerance. After this, Count Weirdo stood up from his throne and ordered Yu Han to quietly conduct his training in the county with his warriors and leave the county. Yu Han then told the Count that after he finished with his government affairs, he could also join his training. After Yu Han and Ryan left the fortress, Count Weirdo thought that he needed to try to get rid of Yu Han and his ghouls as soon as possible. After a couple of minutes, Count Weirdo began to think that Ryan was so popular among the people that it was difficult for the Count to win the people over to his side. After this, Count Huerto demanded that the order of the Tutula mercenaries be called to him along with their leader. At this moment, the Count thought that Yu Han would bring a lot of problems to the Tutula order, and thanks to this, he would be able to get rid of Yu Han even faster. Soon, Yu Han and the ghouls arrived at one of the training grounds. Yu Han and the ghouls arrived at the training ground, and the mentor of the Tutula order informed his warriors that today, Yu Han Sol would be their mentor. The warriors of the Tutula Order were unhappy that they would be trained by the current ghoul lord today, which made them believe that Yu Han was just as much of a monster as the ghouls. The mentor of the Tutula Order said that he also did not like the current situation, but if any of them disobeyed the order, it would be considered a violation of military regulations. After this, Yu Han introduced himself to the warriors of the Tutula Order and told them that today he would conduct a special training for them. Yu Han also told the warriors of the order that he did not care what they thought about him, after which he ordered all the warriors to fall to the ground and start doing push-ups. At this moment, all the warriors of the order began to look at Blog, and he told the warriors that they just need to comply with Yu Han's demands. After that, Yu Han began to do push-ups, and the ghouls immediately began to repeat his actions. However, the warriors of the order did not comply with Yu Han's demands, and then Yu Han ordered the warriors to start doing push-ups right now. A second later, the Blog, along with the warriors of the order, began to try to start doing push-ups and looked at how the Blog did it. However, one of the warriors of the order did not follow Yu Han's order, and he simply looked at what was happening here, and he found it somewhat funny. This order warrior then told Yu Han that he was not going to follow the orders of a monster like him. The master of the order reminded this warrior that, by order of the commander, they were obliged to carry out all the instructions of Yu Han. The order warrior told his mentor that he could not believe that his mentor suddenly began to follow Yu Han's orders. Yu Han listened to the words of this order warrior that the words of a monster like Yu Han could not be on par with the words of the captain of the night guard. At this moment, the master of the order seriously thought about the words of this warrior and began to debate whether he should really follow Yu Han's orders. Meanwhile, this warrior of the order told the rest of the warriors to stand up and think about the fact that they were following the orders of a monster and he believed that because of this, the authority of the human race could suffer greatly. The order's mentor decided to remind his warrior that in the army, the order of the commander has absolute force. But Yu Han decided to try to talk to this warrior himself. Then, the warrior of the order told Yu Han that there were several problems, one of which was the fact that people would never follow the orders of monsters. The second problem this warrior of the order considered was the opinion that there was no point in warriors stopping their fencing training because of bodybuilding since he believed that fencing was the most effective type of fighting. The last problem this warrior named was the reluctance of people to study the training of monsters like Yu Han and his ghouls. Yu Han wanted to explain his position to the warrior of the order, but the old ghoul lord insisted that he could independently resolve all the issues that arose. First, the old ghoul lord solved the first problem by appointing Blog as the new trainer of the order, and since he was a man, the warriors of the order could carry out all his orders without any problems. Regarding the second problem, the old ghoul lord said that he had not previously compared the practical benefits of fencing and bodybuilding, and therefore, it would be difficult to harp on the effectiveness of one or another type of training. Regarding the last question, the old ghoul lord said that in order to find out whether bodybuilding is a barbaric activity, they must definitely arrange a duel between one ghoul and one warrior of the order. After the proposal for a duel, the old ghoul lord called on one of the ghouls to prepare for the upcoming duel. Then, the warrior of the order agreed to conduct a duel, and he was ready to go into battle on behalf of all the other warriors of the order against any ghoul. Soon, one ghoul emerged from the crowd of ghouls and was ready to fight the order warrior for the honor and dignity of his species and Yu Han. At this moment, the warrior of the order was filled with self-confidence, and he believed that he could easily defeat this ghoul in a matter of seconds. After a couple of seconds, the ghouls and the warrior of the order prepared for a duel, and the warrior of the order believed that this ghoul would not be easy to defeat him. The warrior of the order readied his sword and almost immediately attacked the ghoul. 
Meanwhile, the ghoul prepared to repeat the movement of the one-arm press exercise to attack the warrior of the order. As soon as the order warrior got close enough, the ghoul immediately hit the order warrior in the face. The ghoul's blow was strong enough to defeat the warrior of the order with the first blow. Yu Han felt that the blow from his ghoul was too strong, as this ghoul almost killed this warrior of the order. Then the ghoul apologized to Yu Han for not being able to calculate the force of his blow. But Yu Han said that he understood that the ghoul did not do this blow out of malice, and he immediately forgave him. After this, Yu Han told the rest of the order's warriors that since their warrior was defeated, they should now listen to him and follow all his orders during training. While Yu Han was talking with the rest of the order's warriors, the same warrior with whom one of the ghouls fought a few seconds ago used combat energy, thanks to which this warrior regained consciousness. A second later, this warrior of the order decided from behind to attack the ghoul who had defeated him a couple of minutes ago. At this moment, the old ghoul lord used his waiting skill to try and stop the order warrior. Due to the old ghoul lord's skill, the order's warrior's clothes became ten times heavier, causing him to be unable to move further. Meanwhile, Yu Han had already walked towards the order warrior as quickly as possible. As soon as Yu Han was next to this warrior, Yu Han immediately punched him in the stomach. Yu Han's blow turned out to be so powerful that this warrior immediately flew several meters towards one of the walls. A second later, a warrior of the order crashed into one of the walls, and due to the force of the blow, his silhouette remained in the wall. Ryan soon arrived at the training field to find out how today's training was going. Ryan was almost completely confident that Yu Han's training was going without any problems. However, as soon as Ryan arrived at the training field, she saw a crowd of people gather. People were discussing that at the moment when the warrior of the order attacked one of the ghouls, Yu Han used magic. Then Ryan called the mentor of the order to her so that he could explain to her what happened here. The order's mentor immediately ran to Ryan and told her about how his warriors refused to follow Yu Han's orders, which is why they decided to hold a competition. The mentor also said that one of his fighters lost in the competition, which is why all the other warriors began to suspect the ghouls of dishonestly using magic. Ryan could not believe that Yu Han could allow ghouls to behave like this, and then she decided to ask him if he used magic during the competition. However, Yu Han honestly answered Ryan that during the competition, he did not use any magical skills or techniques. After this, Ryan told the Order's mentor that his version of the events taking place here was different from what he had told her. In his defense, the Order's mentor told Ryan that he too did not feel the way Yu Han used magic. At that moment, Count Huerto arrived at the training field, and he asked the mentor of the Order who he believed, his people or the monsters. Also, Count Huerto said that he was just passing by the training field on his business, and he decided to check how today's training was going. After this, Count Huerto again asked Ryan who he believed, his warriors and the people of the county, or unfamiliar and low-grade monsters. Ryan, without any doubt or hesitation, told Count Weirdo that she would always be on her Count's side. Then Count Weirdo asked Ryan why she now believes the words of the monsters if she always stands on the Count's side. At this moment, Yu Han decided that Count Weirdo was done with his state affairs, and then he invited him to join their training. However, the old ghoul lord quickly and clearly explained to Yu Han that Count Weirdo did not come here to train. At this point, Count Hirdo told Ryan that although he greatly appreciated her and her efforts, he believed that her actions somehow harmed the country. The Count believed that it was because of these monsters that not only one of the Order's warriors suffered, but also that unrest began among the rest of the Order's warriors. Then Count Hordo told Ryan that he could not leave everything as it was, and that he must take appropriate measures. Due to the current situation on the training field, Count Hordo was forced to send Ryan into exile for two years. At this moment, Ryan immediately began to look at the Count with her terrifying and cold-blooded gaze, as if she was going to kill the Count right here and right now. This look frightened Count Wordo so much that he even began to regret his decision to send Ryan into exile. At this moment, the mentor of the Order, Tutula and his warriors, immediately stood up for Ryan and began to demand that the Count immediately cancel his order for Ryan's further exile. Ryan considered this a unique opportunity to change Count Wordo's mind about Yu Han. And despite all the support from the Order, she immediately told everyone to shut up and listen to her. Ryan told all the warriors of the Order that after they disobeyed the Count's Order, they have no right to call themselves warriors. One of the warriors of the Order wanted to say something, but Ryan immediately demanded that all the warriors of the Order listen to her. Ryan told the warriors of the Order that she previously considered them to be ordinary newbies, but now her opinion has completely changed after the warriors of the Order dared to interrupt her. After this, Ryan said that she would indeed have to leave so that the new warriors could fully prove themselves after which she thanked the Count for his concern. 
Meanwhile, the Count listened carefully to Ryan and thought about how a minute ago she looked at him as if she wanted to kill him. Afterwards, Ryan apologized to Yuhan because even though she was able to bring him along with the ghouls, she would not be able to continue helping them. However, Yuhan told Ryan that she should not worry about this, since he believed that a person should not follow only one specific course all his life. After this, Ryan asked Count Wurdo to continue to host these monsters for three months, and Count Wurdo said that he would definitely keep his promise, for which Ryan was grateful to the Count. At this moment, Ryan thought that now her plan had begun to take effect, and that now she could only wait for her plan to be fully executed. After that, Ryan left the training field with the thought that when she returned, there would be colossal changes in this county. That evening, a warrior of the Order, who was defeated in a battle with one of the ghouls, returned home with a bag of money. On the way home, the warrior of the Order thought that very soon he would be able to leave this Order forever and live his own life. On the way home, the warrior of the Order thought that his wife, named Belle, loved flowers very much, and the warrior of the Order thought about opening his own flower shop. After this, the warrior of the Order took out a photograph of his family and began to think that very soon he would return home and see his daughter. However, at that moment, a terrible catastrophe occurred in one settlement in which this warrior of the Order lived. This settlement was attacked by monsters, and after that the settlement was engulfed in fire. Everything that was happening was watched by one dangerous monster who was responsible for this incident. While the settlement was engulfed in flames, this monster turned to another monster named Eliza to point out that they had not done anything like this for a long time. Eliza said that their former homeland was welcoming them with joy, after which the monster immediately began to laugh with joy. After a couple of seconds, this monster turned to another monster asking him to dance with him. This monster looked very much like a beautiful princess dressed in a funeral dress. Soon the princess took the monster by the hand and began to dance a ballroom dance with him, admiring the view of the burning settlement and the screams of the local residents. The next morning, Ryan got ready for exile and the blog got ready with her. Suddenly, Ryan became interested in why blog decided to go with her, and then she decided to ask him about it. The blog said that he would not have training with Yuhan today, and Yuhan allowed him to take Ryan on the long journey. Then Ryan decided that it would be nice if they stopped by Yuhan together on the way, but Blog was afraid that Count Weirdo might find out about their visit to Yu Han. However, Ryan said that she was not so weak and defenseless as to be afraid of discontent from Count Weirdo. Blog decided that if Ryan was so confident in her abilities, then he shouldn't worry about her, and he told her that in that case, he would be happy to take her to Yu Han. Suddenly, Ryan noticed that Blog's voice appeared more confident, and Blog was pleased to hear this. Ryan also jokingly told Blog that if he became even stronger, then she might well think about marrying Blog. However, Blog thought that Ryan was a bit old for him, as he thought that Ryan was around 60 years old, while Blog was only in her early 20s. The topic of age really touched Ryan, and she decided to teach Blog a lesson, and then Blog began to run away from Ryan, while Raper and Hendard tried to hold Ryan so that Blog could escape. Meanwhile, the ghouls began to actively hunt slugs throughout the forest. Slugs were very slippery and slimy creatures, and the ghouls put a lot of effort into not accidentally letting the caught slugs slip away. Yu Han sent ghouls to catch slugs for new exercises during training, and the ghouls tried to bring as many slugs as possible to Yu Han. At that moment, the ghouls met Ryan and Bloga, and Ryan became interested in why the ghouls suddenly started catching slugs. The ghouls were happy to see Ryan and Bloga, however. They did not expect to see Bloga so far from the county, since they knew that Bloga had originally only planned to see Ryan off. Then the Blog decided to explain to the ghouls that on the way they decided to visit Yu Han together. After Blog explained everything to the ghouls, Ryan again asked the ghouls why they were catching slugs. Then one of the ghouls told Ryan that Yu Han suddenly needed a lot of slugs. However, Ryan did not understand how Yu Han decided to use slugs, since in this world, slugs had no practical use, and therefore even people did not hunt them. The ghouls could not explain exactly why they needed ghouls, and then they invited Ryan and Blog to go with them, so that they could see everything with their own eyes and understand everything themselves. At this moment, Ryan felt that Yu Han had not explained to the ghouls at all why they were catching slugs, and the ghouls said that it would be very difficult to explain. Then the blog told Ryan that it would actually be better for them to go with the ghouls, since the ghouls did not at all know how to formulate their thoughts correctly. Ryan decided that it would actually be better for her and blog to go after the ghouls. After some time, Ryan and blog finally reached the place where Yu Han was currently located. Yu Han greeted Ryan and Bloga, thinking that they could get to this place with lunging steps to train their legs along the way. Ryan told Yu Han that before going into exile, she decided to visit Yu Han, 
and at the same time she wondered what Yuhan was doing now. Meanwhile, the rest of the ghouls tried to group the captured slugs into a pile using their pectoral calls. Soon Ryan noticed how the ghouls were collecting slugs in one pile, and she decided to ask Yuhan why he suddenly needed all these slugs. Then Yuhan said that he noticed that bodybuilding-related training would be especially effective for the warriors of the order. Then Yuhan decided that in this case, he could conduct group training. But he did not have enough equipment, and he decided to make simulators from scrap materials. At this moment, Ryan believed that Yuhan had decided to use the slugs as a dummy that could be quickly cut with his hands. However, Yuhan told Ryan that it would look a little different, after which he asked the ghouls to bring him any slug. When one of the ghouls brought Yuhan one slug, Yuhan showed Ryan that the first thing to do was to sharply thrust his hand inside the slug. After that, Yuhan took out a small ball from the slug and said that if you take out this piece of slug intact and unharmed, then over time a new slug will form around this ball. Yuhan believed that in order not to catch new slugs, you can leave this ball and wait for the slug to recover again.